theory is when you are using the spreaders to set the boat up so that you have a bit of pre-bend so that it matches the luff curve of the sail and you're going to want more pre-bend uh, to depower the rig and if you want more power you keep the mast straighter so you can adjust these spreaders and they're going to angle backwards like that okay so if you're lighter you need to have them angled a little bit further back and if you want extra extra power or your slightly heavier helm you want to widen them a bit and if you want to get technical you can put the wire this something straight you can i use rope but you can use this something straight onto the wire and you measure the distance from there to there and that will give you your the angle at which you're opening the spreaders um, so yeah cool so the rules in the class rules say that you can extend these to 450 millimeters okay and that is from the trap to the edge has to be maximum 450 millimeters now what that does the longer that you do here it stops the mast from bending sideways if you have too much you can have it bending the wrong way and i'm just going to measure that when we put the mast up by stretching this rope down the side once i've put the rig tension on to see if 450 is pushing the mast a bit too far to the wrong side i have actually no idea at the moment so i'm just going to test that okay okay so you notice that the mast foot is a, a adjustable you can put the mast forward or backwards and if you put the mast foot forward it's ideal for low and fast uh, ideal for um, footing off and uh, waves and chop okay stop if you have the mast foot back it's ideal for gaining height and also for uh, flat water and sub eight knots Okay, when you're putting the mast up, make sure that these are dead straight because when you put the mast up, you can actually get them twisted and you need them dead straight. So this is a loose gauge. This is how you measure rig tension. And it has got some grooves here so that you can tell what wire diameter, cable diameter that you're measuring. Here was, I've got 2.5, so if I push it, into the groove you can see that it says 2.5 that's my that's my diameter okay so then put it in there like that like that and as you can see there's no tension on at the moment if i pull on the tension the measurement here is 2.5 so you go down here and 75 was the tension the recommended tension so between 13 and 16 is what you're looking for. If I set it to 15, and then what I do down here at the very tip is that I have marked on the bit of rope here the uh, the just the datum bit for the tension, so I know that that is 75. Okay. So, so to measure your rake, which is the angle at which your mast rakes backwards towards the back of the boat. You can hoist the tape measure to the very, very top and you measure all the way down to the tip of the rudder knee here. And as you can see, that says, that's a 629 at the moment. I'll give you the measurements in a minute. Do. So you measure from the mast to the tip of the rudder stop here and you uh, put the tension on your rig gauge to make sure that it's around about the 75 and that is then your measurement from the tip of the mast to the top of this knee here and then so i try and keep things really simple i mean it may not be right but uh, six meter 33 is more upright so that's more power and six meter 30 is more back so it's when it's really really windy just drop it back a little bit and that helps with uh, 
keeping the rig under control. So you can adjust the angle at which the mast goes back by these shroud plates in here in the holes. Now something to remember is that these might be different lengths on different boats. So you just need to measure it and make sure that whatever hole it is, is the correct measurement. So don't be, don't be looking at other people's boats and going, oh, that's the fourth hole in the boat. Because their length might be, or shouldn't be, but might be different lengths. Okay, so the idea is to measure it yourself and know that whatever you're sticking the pin in is the exact angle that you want. Also, something to point out is that the length the length of the spreaders out pushing out will also have an effect on which hole it goes in as well. So if somebody is, for instance, have a shorter spreader, then they won't be on the same hole. So like I say, you need to measure your own hole. So the great thing about this boat is that it has, um, you, can, you can adjust the tension and drop the mast back. So if you're really, really, really overpowered, you can actually let a bit of the tension off and then the rig will drop backwards. So it's the same as raking the mast backwards by dropping the pins, but it does reduce the rig tension. So if you really, really, really want to go out in a very, very big blow, then it's best to take the pin down so that you're raking the mast back so that when you put the rig tension on, you, your, your mast is raked back to, to depower the rig, but you've still got rig tension. So the mistake that I made at the Inlands last week was letting the rig drop back and I was letting way too much off the rig tension. What I should have done because it was so windy was angled the mast backwards and then keep the tension on a little bit so that I was uh, powering the boat a bit better rather than tripping over myself. I was a bit overpowered. Don't forget that if you let the rig tension off, you're going to have to pull more kick on just to compensate. So we've measured the rake on this boat, it's a different boat to mine, and uh, we've put maximum power, which is 6 meter 33, and as you can see, it's actually on the top hole, so it's completely different to my boat. So it just goes, uh, it demonstrates that you need to measure your own boat. So as you can see, this mast foot is a long way back in the track. So actually, with the tension on and everything, uh, this this boat would be going very, very well in light winds, wanting to point up in, in flat, flat water and light winds. If you want to weave in and out of waves, you want to move this mast foot forwards slightly, and it allows you to foot off easier and the boat is not trying to go head to wind all the time. If you struggle a little bit, you can always let the rig tension off so that it lets the mast go straight so that you're not pulling it under tension as it goes up the track. Also, if it goes tight at the back there as well, you can let the, the foot off so that the sail can just go up the track without it being under tension.